Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Advisacon webinar series. We're so glad you could join us today for Fast and Focused with Microsoft Teams. Today's presentation is brought to you by Advisacon, where we help you with tools and training to maximize your impact, productivity, and purpose. My name is David Hogan, and I'm the director of Advisacon's Academy, and I will be your guide for today. I'm excited about today's topic because I really do believe it can help you magnify the impact of your team. I wanna begin by just sharing an experience with you that I think is relevant to our topic today. When I was a teenager, one of my friends thought it would be a great idea to spend our summer working on a farm in Southern Idaho. The farm sat at the base of a mountain and was irrigated by a natural spring that flowed down that mountain. Toward the end of the summer, when water was less plentiful, we were tasked with climbing up the mountain to the source of the spring, and then following the spring back down the mountain, rechanneling the stream as we went to ensure that as much water as possible made it to the farm and onto those crops. Why well, does this apply to you? <clears throat> well, members of our team show up with a certain amount of energy every day. And like the water on the crops, we want as much of their energy as possible to be converted into mission relevant results. A Gartner research report found that 20% of the time of the average knowledge worker was spent tracking down information and 28% of their day was spent managing email. At the same time, 59% of managers responded that they were missing important information every day due to information overload. Well, Microsoft Teams endeavors to keep us organized, connected, and informed. Organized by creating portals that make information easy to find. Connected by providing lightweight alternatives to email that allow us to communicate more quickly and with less effort. Informed by making important information available to us in a filterable format so that we can focus on what is most important to our mission relevant results. So how does Microsoft Teams actually help? Well, first, it does allow us to create focus by developing specific project portals. It allows us to connect applications to those portals so we have a central place to do work and collaborate. It also allows us to organize documents and files into a specific project repository so that we don't have so much information to sift through. And of course, it helps us stay connected using conversations, virtual meetings, chats, and calls to keep us all in sync. And it provides automated feeds and notifications to help us stay on top of the most important information that is critical to our success. And of course, we want to take advantage of enterprise class security to protect all of our project data. So our agenda for today, first we want to take a quick tour of Microsoft Teams to see how it is organized. We want to see how we can integrate applications and tools into our project portal, understand how to co-author and share documents, and to see how Teams organizes our information. And finally, we want to learn about the multitude of ways that we can collaborate and communicate to stay informed using Microsoft Teams. Let's go ahead and jump over to an instance of Teams and see what it looks like. You'll notice that right now we are in a web browser and Microsoft Teams and many of the associated applications have both a web version and a desktop version. And of course, you're looking right now at the web version of Teams. We suggest that whenever it's possible that you use desktop version of the applications because they are generally more feature rich than their web counterparts. Here along the left side of the screen, we see what we call the navigation bar. There you see activities, chat, teams, which is the view that we're looking at, calendars, calls, files. And it also allows us the ability to add additional applications to our connection, as you see here. And as you can see, there's even the button for more applications, and it gives you an idea of the plethora of tools that are available to accompany us in Microsoft Teams. Now, Microsoft Teams is generally organized into teams and channels. Here you see 
that the teams are typified by an icon just to the left of them there. And we're gonna be focused today on this particular team here, the Mark 8 project team. And within teams, you have a collection of channels. Now, teams are generally departments or groups of people who are working together on a common interest. Channels with inside of those teams are typically a specific project or some other subject that the people in that team are working on together. When you look in your instance of teams, if you see bold channels, that typically means that there's information or messages or posts inside of that channel that are related to you that you have not yet looked at. Every time we create a new team, it creates a general channel by default and then allows us to create additional channels. Channels can be public or private. Public meaning that everybody in our team could have access to the information in this channel, or private meaning that you can assign a subset of the people on your team to work on a certain channel and they would be the only ones to have access to it. Now you recall that part of our purpose today is to increase our ability to focus and this list of channels and teams could get quite long. And so we want to be able to identify or zero in on the channels that we're currently working on. And so we're able to pin them. And as you'll see here, it puts them toward the top of the list. So we suggest that you take channels that are really active and uh, put them at the top of the list where you can read them easily. Now across the top here of, your, of the screen, we have another area called the tabs. And by default, there is always a tab here for posts, meaning a conversation collection, and for files, meaning the file repository for this particular channel. The tab uh, can then be augmented or added to with additional links or connections to applications and tools that are important for your project team. The next thing you want to do is take a look at how to integrate applications and tools into our project portal. So to begin with, most of the times in working with a project, we always seem to have a collection of notes, uh, notes from meetings or notes of decisions that have been made or brainstorming sessions that we've put together. And as many as you know, there's this, an application called OneNote, uh, which is part of Office 365. And here I have a notebook of a collection of things for this particular uh, uh, channel or project. And I want to be able to include this notebook in the inside of our channel so I have access to it later. And so I'm going to come over here and click on the Add Tab button. And because that's a OneNote element, I'm going to choose OneNote. And it shows me the existing notebooks within my collections. And I'm going to choose the Mark 8 Project Team and the Research and Development Notebook. Now you'll see that it has added a tab to our collection for this project. And I'm just going to rename it because it's kind of long. And I'm just going to call it Notebook. So now members of my team from inside of our portal just have a one-click access to our collection of notes and notebooks uh, and to use over time. Now, in addition, I might want to be able to keep track of assignments that have been given to people or a series of tasks and deadlines and dates. And another application that's available to us in, in this environment is called Microsoft Planner. And here you can see I have a collection of Microsoft planning boards over here to the left. And this particular one, Mark 8 Project Tracking, is one that's associated with the project that we're working on. So again, I want to be able to go back here and add another tab. And this time I'm going to choose Planner. And it gives me the option of creating a new plan or using an existing plan. And I'll click on that and choose existing plans. And here is our Mark 8 Project Tracking Plan. And now you see it is added inside of our portal as well. Sometimes we want to be able to connect other Microsoft applications that are helpful to a particular project. One example might be Power BI. 
I might need a dashboard of indicators that we constantly need to be referring to within our project. And so again, I click on the add tab button. I go into Power BI and I'm going to choose the operation analytics board from my Power BI instance. And now again, it makes this available within our project portal. Finally, there are times when we want to be able to connect our project portal to third party apps. They're not part of the Microsoft suite. Uh, maybe we're collaborating with an outside organization or other partners and we need to connect with their information. An example of that might be using Trello, which is a popular planning and management tool. And here I'm again not creating a new board, I'm connecting to an existing one. And now you can see how it shows up within Microsoft Teams and makes it available to me. Finally, sometimes there's information that's just available on a website, but maybe it's something that we're referring to uh, quite frequently. For example, maybe we have a certain project site somewhere and we need to keep track of what the weather is because it's impacting our project. And so here I'm going to a, a weather site, you know, for Wichita, Kansas, and I'm coming back because that's where our project is located. I'm going to add a tab. And in this case, I'm just going to say, hey, I'm connecting to a website, type in website and choose that option. And I'll say um, site weather and paste the URL in here and save that. And now I can click on go to site here and it shows me the weather in Wichita, Kansas. So you can see now we've been able to create um, a considerable collection of applications that will help us get the work done on our particular project. Um, also, you might find that you don't always add these tabs in the order that you would like them. And of course, you'll notice that they are able to be moved about and put in a different order if that's helpful to you. Okay, next we want to talk about how to co-author share documents and just to understand in general how files are organized in Microsoft Teams. So one thing that many people don't know or realize is that files in Microsoft Teams are actually collected and underpinned in Microsoft SharePoint. And so I'm going to go here and click and open in SharePoint and open a SharePoint window. And I'm going to go to my sites. And right away, you'll notice that this list looks familiar because this was the list of teams that was in Microsoft Teams over here. And that is because every team creates a site in SharePoint. So again, every team creates a site in SharePoint. And I'm going to go uh, ahead and look at our Mark 8 project team. And I'm going to go to the document section. And now you'll notice that every channel is represented here by a folder. So again, teams are sites and channels are folders. And here we are working in our research and development channel. And so now you'll notice that this list here under research development and this list here are the same list. So just demonstrating that um, SharePoint is really the underpinning of file management here. Many people ask, where are the files located in Microsoft Teams? And this just is the answer to that question. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, whenever you have the opportunity, you want to be able to use the desktop version of Microsoft Teams. And, and this is also true in working with files. So I'm going to go ahead and just open uh, the desktop application and give you some information here. So we're looking at a particular channel called business processes, and I have a couple of files here. And one of the things you'll notice that is different in the desktop app is I can click here and click on open, and it gives me several options. I can open this file and edit it in Teams. So it'll just show up right here within this portal. Or I can open it in a web browser. And of course, it will be using the web version of Microsoft Word, or I can open it with a desktop application of Word, and you notice that is the default. So that's one important difference in the two different types of applications. Also, again, uh, we want to talk for a minute about 
how to co-author documents and how that's important. You'll notice if I click on this advise con lexicon document, there's an option here that says copy a link. So I'll choose that, choose copy, and it creates a link and allows me to copy that to the clipboard. Now, why is that important? Well, this is so incredibly helpful because I have the ability to simply take this link and I can put it in an email, I can put it in a text or a chat, I can post it on a message board, and my teammates can get into this file from wherever they are. This way I avoid having to copy the file and then attach it to an email, and then knowing that there are copies of the file located on people's desktops and in a variety of places, and we never know, you know which version of that document is the live version. Well, by sharing links, we just have one copy of the document and I can share it everywhere and people can connect to it from everywhere. And I'll just give you one example of that. I've copied the link to the clipboard. I'm going to go over here to our conversation string under post. And I can just share that here in a post and send it out to my team. Hey, team, check this out. And they can click on that and access the document. It's absolutely fantastic. Next, we want to talk about how we communicate within Teams and how we can collaborate. And there's lots of different options. And uh, we'll go through several of those in our particular discussion today. Just looking at the board here, we see that there are at least four ways for us to communicate. We can have meetings. And we choose this button to actually start a meeting. Or we can chat or we can make a phone call from within Teams, or we can post on conversation boards. We're not gonna so much talk about meetings and calls in this particular discussion. We'll be focused primarily on posts and chats. But as, again, as you look through this collection here, you wanna remember that if you see anything in bold on this list, that means that somebody has posted something there that you have not read yet that you may want to check into. First, I'm going to start today to take an opportunity to utilize the chat feature. And I can go ahead and click on this button here and type in the name of someone in my organization and select them. And I can come down here and type out a message to them like, hey there. Now, a couple of things that you can do. I can also say, wait a minute, hey, where is the uh, report? And of course I can uh, format it by using this and maybe make it red or big or bold if I want to. Uh, another thing you can do is click on this particular delivery option and you'll notice at the bottom it has urgent and this option actually will send a message to the recipient every two minutes for 20 minutes hoping that they respond within the 20 minutes. You might want to reserve that option for, well, for really urgent situations, or it could be fairly annoying. Uh, other things that you can do, you can add emojis, you can attach a file to your chats, uh, you can attach GIFs, um, make it fun and exciting. And so all these things can be done uh, with a chat. So loads of fun there. Next, uh, in addition to being able to do all that, we can go into conversations within our team. I'm just gonna go to the conversation string here. And as you can see, uh, lots of information gets posted there and people share a variety of things. And again, just as with can within chats, you can click here on new conversation and you can post links to files. You can actually attach files and share a variety of things here. It's just a, a fantastic tool. In addition to that, uh, let me just, you can reply to existing um, comments or you can create a whole new conversation string. Here I'm going to reply to Adele. I'm going to just click here and say, um, Bonjour, mon ami, in my very best French, which isn't good at all. But uh, I send that off to her. Now, if she didn't speak French, she could go here and click on this button, excuse me, for that same item. She can go over here and choose the option to translate, and it will translate that for her. 
Um, the system has, I uh, believe, six languages built in. I don't know what all of them are, but I do know that French and Spanish uh, are part of what is available. So that's helpful in, in uh, multilingual environments. Great. The next thing I want you to be aware of is a great feature called at mentions. For example, if I want to message a person or two people, I can type in the at symbol and then start typing in their name. And in this case, I'll type in Megan. And uh, and then I can type her message like, uh, don't forget the cheese uh, for the party. Now, uh, what does this do? Because it's not actually a chat being sent directly to her. I'm posting this to a message board. But anytime we put in what is called an at mention, it adds, it kind of taps them on the shoulder and puts something uh, in their activity feed that lets them know that I mentioned them and then it gives them the opportunity to look at whatever is posted there. Uh, you can, of course, at mention several people at a time in a post that you're making. But what many people don't know is you can also at mention an entire team or at mention an entire channel. And so that's, uh, that's awesome for being able to make announcements and things such as that. Another, another tool that I kind of like is the ability to use tags. Let's say, for example, that we had a team of 12 people, but three of the people on the team are a group that you work with kind of as a subgroup and you work with them all the time. You can create what is called a tag. And I'm going to go into the Project 8 team right here and click on Manage Tags. And you'll see I've created a tag here called the Three Musketeers, and I've added three people to that. So sometimes when I just need to communicate with those three coworkers, instead of typing them all out separately or typing or announcing something to the whole team, I can just at mention Three Musketeers and post something, and all of them will get notification in their feed. Kind of cool. I, I love that feature. All right, go over to the activity feed. This is where conversations and things, you know, throughout your organization show up. And you can identify here, you can go to my activity and it will show you things that you have been doing within Teams. And I can also go to the general feed and I have the ability to filter things that show up here. For example, if I just wanna know uh, what things reference have the word sales in them right now, it would show me. Or if I wanted to look for mentions of clowns or mentions of a person's name, I can filter and it would show me those elements and then give me details about it in this section here. Finally, one last thing I want to share with you about the communication features that uh, I'm very excited about. And it has to do with meetings. And again, many of you have already been doing meetings, but as you notice here, if you haven't looked at it before, if you click on the, the ellipses at the top over the word more, you get this menu. And one of the options that you see there is to start a recording. What you may not have known is just how cool this feature can be. Once you've finished recording a certain meeting, of course, the recording shows up in your feed and you're able to open that recording. But as you look at the recording, you'll notice that there's an option on the right here is this transcript. If you click on that, it of course opens a transcript of the recording. It has converted the whole video or the audio from your video, I should say, into a transcript that you can read. Uh, one of the cool features is that you can search through that transcript. And let's say, for example, that you had an hour long meeting and uh, there was something that funny happened in the meeting again about clowns and you wanted to watch that part of the meeting again, you could search through the transcript for the word clowns. You, it, it would go down there, you could read that part of the transcript, or you could click right there and it would start the video at that point in the meeting. So super cool option uh, for us to look at content from meetings. Okay, as one of my favorite folks, Patrick Lencioni says, not finance, not strategy, not technology. It is teamwork that remains the ultimate competitive advantage, both because it is so powerful and because it is so rare. So just like that job of making sure water got to the farm and onto the crops, 
we want to ensure that as much energy from our teams as possible is spent on mission relevant results. And so we want to use teams to be organized, to have portals and a single context for working on a project and have great focus, be connected with lightweight and reliable communication tools, and to be informed with these automated and intelligently filtered channels that help us to focus on the information that is most important to us. Well, thank you for being with us today and for watching this webinar. And we want to invite you to visit the Advisacon Academy at advisacon.thinkific.com. And of course, we invite you to reach out to our team to find out how we can help you and your organization with current and future projects. We do look forward to seeing you again in a future webinar and hope you have a wonderful day.